Why is Ethiopia so rich? At the Horn of Africa is a blocked-in country, Ethiopia, formerly known as the Federal Republic of Ethiopia, with an estimated nominal GDP of $122.591 billion and a PPP of $401 billion. Even though still considered as an emerging power and a developing country, Ethiopia experienced an economic growth of 9.4% from 2010. To better understand Ethiopia's success story, it is necessary to have brief knowledge of where the modern Ethiopia we see today came from. In its recent multinational and border state, Ethiopia was formed under the conquest of Imperial Menelik II. The Dirk, a military junta, took power in 1974, and after their collapse in 1991, the country was dominated with a new constitution, an ethnic-based federalism by the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front EPRDF. The country has remained a centralized regional power while under monarchical rule since the appointment of Abiy Ahmed as Prime Minister and its today's economy is based on mixed market orientation. It is the second most populated country in Africa and the 12th most populated in the world with a population of over 117 million people. Despite its low per capita gross national income, Ethiopia has been one of the fastest growing economies in the world over the past 15 years. However, the country's consistently high economic growth in recent times has resulted in positive trends in poverty reduction in both urban and rural areas. Welcome to Think Rich Africa, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business and personal development content to educate, motivate and inspire you. We strongly believe that entrepreneurship, rather than global PT, is the key to Africa's growth and development. And we thereby introduce you to our special African development playlist. So if you're African and aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. Ethiopia's Capital Addis Ababa, often referred to as the political capital of Africa because of its diplomatic, historical and political significance for the continent, is Ethiopia's sprawling capital, bordering the Great Rift Valley in the highlands. It is headquarters of major international organizations like the African Union and the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa ECA. The city is specially surrounded by the zone of Oromia and its population is made up of people from different parts of Ethiopia. The city's Human Development Index is high and it is known for its lively culture, well-built fashion scene, high involvement of youths, growing art and for having the most rapid economic growth. Another city with special status as chartered city in Ethiopia is Diridawa, with a population of over 1.2 million people and located in the eastern part of the nation. Diridawa is well known for being an industrial center with several large market centers and a university located just outside of town. Language and Ethnicity Based most importantly on language, Ethiopians are ethnically diverse. The nation has about a hundred different languages that can be shared into four categories Semitic, Cushitic, Amotic, and Nilotic. Constitutionally, all Ethiopian languages enjoy official recognition, but Amharic is the working language of the federal government and Oromo is one of the two most spoken languages in the nation. Religion Ethiopia has one of the oldest organized Christian bodies in the world, known as the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, and for a long period, Christianity served as the official religion of the country and enjoyed a dominant role in the culture and politics of Ethiopia. 
The teachings of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church are followed by more than two-fifths of Ethiopians and about another one-fifth cling to other Christian beliefs. About one-third Ethiopians practice Islamism, majority of whom come from eastern lowlands. Even though the status of Islam in Ethiopia is far from equal with that of Christianity, the country still has Muslim leaders giving a symbolic parity to the two faiths and so the perception of Ethiopia and so the perception of Ethiopia as an island of Christianity in a sea of Islam still exists between Ethiopians and foreigners. The remaining part of the Ethiopian population are either Protestant or native believers. Religion in Ethiopia has provided the basic precepts of morality and so there is a high degree of respect for human sanctity in the country. Ethiopians often invoke God to seal agreements, deliver promises, and seek justifiable redresses. There is respect and prominence for old age in the Ethiopian society due to the wisdom, knowledge, prudence, pity, and considerations that come with it. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church has had so much influence on the national culture alongside the influence of the Derg. And so Christian and Islamic religion holidays are as well national holidays. Demography Ethiopia's population growth rate is above the global average and is one of the highest in Africa. Its life expectancy is above 50 years of age, which is about average and less than that of the world. The country has a relatively young population with more than two-fifths below 15. Ethiopia is home for refugees from a few neighboring countries, majority of which are from Somalia and a considerable number from Eritrea, Sudan, and South Sudan. It's apparent that demography, ethnicity, and religion are only giving us border information of what we are seeking to know. So, let's dive right into the insights of Ethiopia's success story to find out if Ethiopia is rich by chance or by merit. Economy During the role of Haile Selassie I, Ethiopia enjoyed a little bit of an unbound enterprise. There was advancement in production and export of cash crops, like coffee, and an establishment of import substituting manufacturers like footwear and textile. After the Second World War, tourism, insurance, banking and transport started contributing more to the country's economy. During the rule of the Derg regime, all means of production were nationalized, which included land, housing, farms and industry. Conditions in the rural areas of Ethiopia keep improving due to the attention the government is giving to rural development. Also, Ethiopia has had an established diplomatic relationship with the U.S., which is important, complex, and focused on four broad goals, which are to protect American citizens, to strengthen democratic institutions, and expand human rights, spurring broad-based economic growth, and promoting development, and finally, advancing regional peace and security. This relation has contributed to the growth and development of Ethiopia. Also, the World Bank is assisting the fight of poverty and stepping up living standards in Ethiopia. It is also their goal to promote rapid economic growth and improve service delivery in Ethiopia. They have been working hand in hand with the Ethiopian government to find a solution to the drought affecting the lowland areas. Agriculture, forestry, and fishing Even though soil erosion, overgrazing, and deforestation has severely damaged the country's plateau, Ethiopia's most encouraging resource is its agricultural land. Most of the reserved land is located in the part of the country with favorable climatic conditions for intensive agriculture. Furthermore, Ethiopia is one of the very rich countries in Africa in number of livestock with cattle inclusive. Livestock raising in the country potentially meets the demand of national as well as international markets when grazing land and breeding are well managed. 
Three types of agricultural activities are carried out in Ethiopia, which are the subsistence smallholder sector, which produces most of the stable grains like wheat, barley, oats, corn, millet, and also pulses, such as chickpeas, peas, beans, and lentils. The second type of agriculture is cash cropping, which produces coffee, beeswax, oil seeds, sugarcane, and cat. Coffee is native to Ethiopia and its export is the most important in the country. And lastly, the third agricultural activity, which is essential in the peripheral lowlands, is livestock raising. Primarily, artisanal fishing also occurs in the country's rivers and inland lakes. Although the fishing industry in the country is small, lacks adequate technology for export production, small-scale operators still produce and sell locally. Resources and Power Even though small as compared to agriculture, minerals play a role in Ethiopia's economy. Gold is found in mines in Kiber Mengist in the south, platinum at Yubdo in the west, and tantalum in the south-central part of the country. Gemstone deposits, neobium and soda ash are also mined within the country, while exploration for other potential minerals, including petroleum and natural gas, that can be mined is going on. Rock salt is also found in Denakil Plain, as well as quarried building materials such as marble. The most important source for industries and minor cities in Ethiopia is hydroelectricity, which is generated at a number of stations, which include the Awash River, the Blue Nile, the Omo River, and the Shebele River, and others. Some hydroelectricity projects have shown considerable controversy, and even with all these already functioning stations, Ethiopia's full potential has not yet been exploited. In rural areas, wood and charcoal are the primary energy sources. However, the country's long dependence on these primary energy sources has contributed to the depletion of trees, resulting in very little or no forest, and so the government has ongoing projects for the expansion of hydroelectric power in order to increase access to electricity in rural areas as well as export to other countries. Manufacturing More so, one-tenth of Ethiopia's GDP comes from modern manufacturing, whose products are basically for domestic consumption. Among the most essential products are processed food and beverages, textiles, tobacco, leather and footwear, and also chemical products. In offering non-farm employment, the cottage industry and small enterprises, which produce consumer goods like furniture, utensils, construction, woven fabric, jewelry, poultry, baskets and leather crafts, some of which reach the tourist market, are more important than industrial manufacturing. Finance Ethiopia has a national bank known as the country's central bank, which issues national currency, the beer, and is also responsible for the regulation functions. Among the many commercial banks located in Addis Ababa is the Commercial Bank of Ethiopia, which is the largest commercial bank in the country, with branches all over the country. Loans for agriculture, livestock and investment, and even manufacturing are being provided by the Development Bank of Ethiopia. However, many financial institutions extend their loans for business and real estate development. Trade Exportation in Ethiopia is almost entirely for agricultural products, like coffee, which is the primary foreign exchange earner. Other products for exportation include cat, heightened skins, oil seeds, live animals, and gold. While chemical products, machinery, and transport equipment account for most of the value of imports, Ethiopia has an established significant trade partnership with Saudi Arabia, China, and the United States. Services About two-fifths of Ethiopia's GDP comes from the service sector. Even though tourism was lessened during the Dek rule period, Ethiopia once more promotes tourism potentials of historical wonders such as the churches of Lalibela, the Gonda castles, and the antiquities of Aksum. 
Equally, the diversity of Ethiopia's people, their culture and the natural beauty of their land is also attractive. Labor and Taxation According to Ethiopian law, all workers in the country are allowed to participate in unions, except civil servants. Also, the country has labor organizations, like the Confederation of Trade Unions, which is an umbrella of a number of autonomous federations, and is the largest in the country, as compared to the also projecting Ethiopian Teachers Association. More than half of Ethiopian government's budget typically comes from tax revenue, and so improvements have been made in the collection of essential taxes, like import duties, income slash profit tax, and sales tax, which have contributed to a rise in the tax revenue. Transportation The road system in Ethiopia has been one among the more successful developments in the country. Above 926 kilometers of Ethiopia's standard gauge railways are electrified. 656 kilometers between Addis Ababa and the port of Djibouti, and 2,670 kilometers between the country's capital Addis Ababa and the twin cities of Desi and Kombucha. Both cities are already functional and allow passenger transportation with a designated speed of 120 km per hour and free transport with a speed of 80 km per hour, with travel times of averagely 12 hours and 6 hours respectively. Construction projects are currently going on to extend these already existing railways and construct a third railway. As a result of the Ethiopian government's effort to improve the infrastructure of roads, Ethiopia has a total of over 100,000 kilometers of roads, which have been paved and graveled. The country has more than 61 airports, among which is the Boli International Airport in Addis Ababa and the Tena de Jasmak Yulma International Airport in Diredawa, which accommodate international flights. The Ethiopian Airlines is a member of the Star Alliance and the country's flag carrier. It is wholly owned by the government of Ethiopia and from its hub at the Boli International Airport, it serves a network of above 102 international passengers, 21 domestic passengers and 45 cargo destinations. However, it is one of the fastest carriers in the industry and in Africa. These improvements in the transportation sector have all led to advancement in the trade and service sectors of the country, which in turn leads to a rise in the country's GDP. Telecommunication Also, the government is currently working actively to expand and improve the telecommunications infrastructure and services in the country, leading to a wide increase in the use of landlines and mobile phones as telecommunication systems. So far, the steps the government has taken already have led to an easy communication in businesses, resulting to advancement in the country's economy. Education In Ethiopia, access to education keeps improving over the years. There is presently a 700% increase in the 15.5 million primary enrollment, which was recorded in 2008-2009. The country has two educational systems, which are rooted in Christianity and Islam. The country currently has colleges of liberal arts, technology, public health, building, law, social works, business, agriculture, and theology. Public education is free at primary, secondary, and tertiary levels, and so there is a significant boost in enrollment for especially girls into schools across all regions of the country. The literacy rate of the country has greatly increased for both female and male. Health and Welfare Poor sanitation and malnutrition have been alarming health issues in Ethiopia, but due to improvement in education, medicines and hospitals in the country, there is a considerable reduction in these health issues and advancement in birth rates, infant mortality rates and death rates witnessed throughout the country in recent years. Also, according to the UNDP report, the average Ethiopian living is 62.2 years old. 
Although sanitation is a problem in Ethiopia, the country has currently witnessed a rise in the use of improved water sources in both rural and urban areas. Reports from the WHO state that there are above 119 hospitals and 412 health centers in Ethiopia. Sports and Entertainment The main sports in Ethiopia are track and field and football. Ethiopian athletes have won multiple gold medals in track field and an Ethiopian woman, Lede Senbet Gide, holds world records in both women's 5,000 meter and 10,000 meter run. The country is also known for its very good poetry and for its use of traditional medicines. These sectors have employed and are a source of income to a number of Ethiopians and in turn the economy of the country. All of these boroughs, from agriculture to sports, have a collaboration which summarizes all Ethiopia's efforts into a triumph that is modern-day Ethiopian economy. To every Ethiopian who is yet to feel the actual implications of economic growth and therefore doubts their country, our message to you from a path of faith is, change is coming for you, your children, and their generations. If you enjoyed watching this video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and be a member of our ever-growing community here at Think Rich Africa. Thanks for watching and see you in another exciting but educative video.